bong sop 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 Chanuka hu chag tov Chanuka hu chag tov Sebe bong sop 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 Chag simcha hu la'am Nes gadol haya sham Nes gadol haya sham Chag simcha hu la'am Sevevon spin and turn While the colorful candles burn What a marvelous holiday As we sing and dance and play Tell the story, say the prayers A great miracle happened there It's the festival of life For eight whole days And eight whole nights Hello, and welcome to Gratz College's celebration. Everyone has a Gratz story. What's yours? I am Kenny Ellis, and I'm honored and delighted to serve as your master of ceremonies today. A little bit about me. Uh, I am Philadelphia born and bred, Los Angeles-based actor, musician, cantor, and best of all, Gratz alumnus. I attended the School of Observation and Practice, where we learned how to read Hebrew and speak Hebrew from Habet Ushma, Shi'ur Aleph Mishpachat Doron. I'm sure a lot of you remember that. I also uh, attended the high school normal department, and I was in the class of 1970. I just happen to have this right here. And I wanted to show, this is me right here. Uh, and also, this is Shalom Altman. He was very instrumental, literally, in the music department. Uh, and probably one of the reasons I'm sitting here in front of you today. Also, real quickly, this is Rabbi Nachum Waldman right there. He officiated at my bar mitzvah. I usually keep this in my wallet, but today I'll keep it here, if you don't mind. And now, <laughs> just want you to know that um, what you were listening to was from my album, my CD, Hanukkah Swings, the very, the only, one and only big band Hanukkah CD. If you want to know more about it, KennyEllis.com. So now let's begin our program. Thanks to all of you for joining us today from places near and far, from Ohio to Florida, from California to Canada, Israel, and of course, from all across greater Philadelphia. It's wonderful to know that those joining us today include so many Gratz alumni, faculty, staff, family, and friends. We have a great program planned for you today, but first a few housekeeping notes. Everyone is invited to encourage to use the chat, which is the, uh, right here on the side, if you have it on your, on your computer. Uh, when you enter the chat, be sure to enter your first and last name. That's very important, so we know who you are. Please say hello and introduce yourself. Share your connection to Gratz. And throughout the program, you can offer comments and reflections on the presentations, and even share some of your own Gratz memories. And now, I would like to officially open the raffle. Da, 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 da. Tickets are $5 each, and you can buy as many as you would like for the chance to win a special edition Gratz Oral History Project book in both digital and print formats, which includes over 500 alumni stories and photos, plus an official Gratz cap and travel bag. The total package is valued at over $450. Winners will be announced at the end of the program, and a link to purchase tickets is in the chat. So get your tickets now. 
And now it is my pleasure to introduce Kathy Elias, chair of the Gratz Board of Governors. She worked for more than 20 years as a Jewish communal professional and enthusiastically joined the Board of Governors of Gratz College in 2016. In June of 2021, she was elected chair of the Board of Governors. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathy Elias. Thank you, Kenny. I'm pleased to welcome everyone today to our program. I'd like to take a moment first though to tell you my story as a graduate of Gratz College and the proud parent of two Gratz Jewish Community High School students. My story begins in 1999 when I was working in office space in the Gratz College building. In 2004, I took a sabbatical to begin clinical pastoral education. I wanted to become a hospital chaplain. Because I'm not clergy, which is the usual path, and my background was in education, not religious studies, I chose Gratz College for graduate study that would count towards certification as a chaplain. Move forward to 2009. I received my Master of Arts degree in Jewish Studies. By that time, my goals led me in a slightly different direction. I stayed in the Jewish communal world, but I moved from a local position to one in an organization with a wider focus. Now that's code for I traveled a lot. As I connected with people across North America and Israel, I was astonished at how many shared with me that they too had a Gratz College connection because that is the Gratz College story. Gratz has grown from a local institution serving the Philadelphia Jewish community to an international educational resource. And in the process, our community has grown to include thousands of people just like you and me, who found a place in our professional and personal journeys at Gratz College. In early 2021, we launched the Alumni Directory and Oral History Project in partnership with Publishing Concepts, a company that specializes in uh, producing alumni directories. This project helped us collect the stories of our alumni as told in their own words. It'll come, this project will culminate in um, March of 2022 with the publication of a book entitled Your Gratz Story, Our Shared History. The book will give us a picture of Gratz College's impact through the stories of 510 of our alumni across generations and around the world. Today, you'll hear some of those stories. Enjoy. Thank you, Kathy. Now we'll begin the storytelling part of our program. Through storytelling, Gratz hopes to connect its past, present, and future. Gratz has selected five individuals to tell from their unique perspectives, chapters in the Gratz story. We are deeply grateful to each of these five for they have given their time and dedication over a course of two months to prepare their stories for us today. Our first storyteller is Tali Siegel. Tali, a practicing attorney in the Philadelphia area, is a graduate of Gratz College's School of Observation and Practice, the high school, uh, the Hebrew High School and Gratz Ulpan Summer Program in Israel. Tali is the daughter of a proud Gratz double alumna with a Bachelor of, Hebrew, uh, Bachelor of Hebrew Literature and a Master's of Hebrew Literature. She's the sister of a Gratz Isaac Mayer Wise Department graduate and the mother of two former Gratz Jewish Community High School students. It's a family affair over there. She received her BA from Emory University and her JD from the George Washington University Law School. Welcome, Tali. I'm five years old, and tonight my mommy and daddy are going to mommy's Gratz graduation. She's getting a bachelor's. She already has a bachelor's from a graduation from before I was born, but she goes to Gratz, so now she's getting another bachelor's. Mommy goes to her job as a social worker, and she takes care of my little brother and me, and she's about to have another baby. 
and she goes to Gratz. I like to learn. Maybe one day I can be like mommy and go to Gratz too. I'm in my carpool to Hebrew school. We're a bunch of Melrose Park families that have been carpooling together for years to Gratz at 10th and Tabor. I'm in sixth grade and I've been going to Gratz for five years to the School of Observation and Practice, the elementary school. We've arrived. I'm running up the stairs to the student lounge. I see all my friends and it's so noisy as everybody is letting off steam from their day at secular school. And I hear the vending machines going and I, there's the warning bell, time to get to class. I have my Karen Kayamit Lee Israel, my Jewish National Fund sheet of quarters with me today. I've been collecting quarters for a few weeks to buy a tree in Israel. And today I'm handing in my $2.50 to buy a tree in memory of my Saba, my grandfather, who was a pioneer in Israel. Take out your machberets, our notebooks, says the teacher. Our Gratz spiral notebooks are so colorful with a picture of Gratz on the front and inside there are these wide spaces for our Hebrew letters and underneath there's narrow spaces for the Nikud, the vowels. I'm 14 and tonight my entire family is going to my mom's Gratz graduation. It's an extra special night because tonight my mom and one of her classmates will be the very first people ever to receive their master's degrees from Gratz College. My mom goes to her regular job and she runs her Tsipur's Israeli foods business that she started. She takes people with special needs on vacations and she, she takes care of my two little brothers and me and she still goes to Gratz. Hey mom, if you keep taking these classes at Gratz, you're gonna be a rabbi soon. I'm 15 and I'm at JFK Airport with 80 or so of my new and old friends. We're getting ready to leave on our Gratz Ulpan summer trip to Israel. I'm playing Sheshbesh, backgammon, with Kevin, whom I met in line when we were getting lunch. He's teaching me the game. And I have a feeling I'm going to be playing a lot of Sheshbesh this summer. They're calling our flight. I am so excited to start our Gratz summer in Israel. We just landed at Ben Gurion Airport and I'm walking off the plane. And I sense that the girl behind me, who's on my Gratzel Pond, has stopped walking. I turn around to look and she's kissing the ground. I guess that's something people do here because Israel is just that special. We're on the bus going from the airport to carry out Maria, where we'll spend our next week living in Israel. We, are, we just stopped at the Western Wall. It's 2.30 in the morning and it's absolutely breathtaking in the moonlight with all the papers with prayers written on them stuck between the stones, rocks piled on each other, stones from days gone by. I stand and watch my friends before it. Then I too begin to cry. We've been at Fargalim a village outside of Haifa on the Mediterranean for a few weeks now. This is where we have all of our Ulpan Hebrew classes. Ulpanics, only 20 opportunities left. That's Dr. Enten, one of our senior Madrichim counselors. He truly believes that each one of our Ulpan classes is an opportunity to further our Hebrew education. So I'm going to class in the sweltering heat and someone in front of me who works here drops an egg and it fries on the sidewalk. Wake up little cuties, time for another day on our Gratzel Pond. Ah, that's Cindy, she's one of our cool madrachim, but it's 3.30 in the morning. She's been waking us up in the middle of the night every day this week to hike the Negev before the sun comes up. Today's hike is glorious with all of my Gratzel Pond friends and I see a little sliver of orange in the sky as the sun starts to rise. I see our six Madrachim 
putting out our picnic breakfast. I see glistening cucumbers and ripe tomatoes and lovely fruit. And we all go and grab something and then go sit together in the sand to watch the sunrise. I'm walking across the stage at the Gratz Auditorium. Dr. Isaacman hands me my Hebrew high school diploma and my teaching certificate. Maybe next year I'll teach Hebrew school when I'm away at college. Tonight marks my 11th, the end of my 11th year of education at Gratz College. I'm now a mom living in the Northwest suburbs of Philadelphia, and Gratz has relocated to my hometown of Melrose Park. I just received a Gratz brochure in my mail, and it is highlighting a, an upcoming continuing legal education course, or CLE. As an attorney I'm mandated to take CLEs, and I've kind of become a Gratz CLE groupie. I tell all of my lawyer friends that the Gratz CLEs are the best out there. We learn Jewish law, we learn secular law, we learn how they compare, and we learn it from the most amazing Gratz professors, like Dr. Ruth Sandberg, and from wonderful secular practitioners. And I attend other programs at Gratz too, and often I bring my mom with me. But now I've got to run. It's my turn to drive my daughters carpool to the Jewish Community High School at Gratz. I walk into Gratz in Morrow's Park on the Mandel campus. I walk into the lobby, I turn left, go to the end of the room, and I just have to spend a moment looking at the photo montages from my Hebrew high school graduation and my brother's Isaac M. Wise department graduation. I then turn around, go to the other end of the room, descend a few steps, and I can't help but smile as I see the photo montages from my mother's 1967 bachelor's graduation and her 1975 master's graduation. And she looks so nice with her like hair in this beehive style hairdo she used to wear back then. Seeing these photos always connects me, my past with my, my present. It's April 10th, 2020, and the world has been shut down for a few weeks because of this pandemic. But I'm having a light bulb moment. I'm texting Robbie, one of my good friends, whom I met on my grad school pond more than 40 years ago. Hey, Robbie, you know that upon reunion you were imagining? Not to sound too trendy, but what do you say we do it on Zoom? It's 16 days later, and I am sitting in front of my computer, looking at more, to, more than 40 of the people I traveled through Israel with more than 40 years ago. I see Evan, and I see Stephanie, and I see two of our Madrachim, Cindy and Howie, and everybody is talking about their wonderful memories from our Gratz Pond. Robin, who met her husband on our old pond, says, I really loved our hikes in the desert, and our upon classes actually were kind of fun too. Phil says, I loved walking through those ancient tunnels under the city of Jerusalem. I say, I think the real gift we got from our Gratz upon was the friendships we made. I'm 15 again. And it's so good to be back in Israel with all of my friends and the Madrachim from our Gratz Pan. We're on the bus going to our next destination. And it's so noisy, so wonderfully noisy, as everybody is talking and laughing and teasing and singing. And it is so warm to be back in this Gratz community. He name my toe, he name my he name my la la la. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> getting carried away. Tolly, that was quite a trip. You really 
Uh, I was there with you the whole time. My goodness, you, you took us all back through the wonderful, wonderful Gratz experiences. Thank you. Now, before our next storyteller, we're going to have some fun and invite you all to participate in the Gratz History Trivia Quiz. If you wish to participate, enter your answer in the chat on the side there. Uh, the first one to answer correctly is the winner of the collection of official Gratz gear and the official Kenny Ellis Hanukkah Swing CD. So winners will be announced at the end of the program. So now you're ready. Here is our first quiz question. Who is this woman? A, Grace Nathan. B, Abigail Franks. C, Rebecca Gratz. Or D, Emma Lazarus. What do you think? Answer in the chat. A, Grace Nathan. Is this B, Abigail Franks, C, Rebecca Gratz, or D, Emma Lazarus? Please enter your answer in the chat. Great. There will be more qu quiz questions later on in the program, so you'll have more opportunities to win. Now, our second storyteller is Michelle Edgar. Michelle is a 2020 graduate of the Master of Arts in Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Gratz. Michelle received her BA in Education from Rowan University. She currently serves as the Program Specialist for the Institute of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Raritan Valley Community College. Michelle is one of the founding members of 3GNJ, and she has been a volunteer docent for the Holocaust Memorial and Education Center at the Shimon and Sarah Birnbaum Jewish Community Center. Welcome, Michelle. How did I wind up on this panel with such distinguished Gratz alumni? My story starts many years ago well before I was born. It's 1938 and Edith Israel, my grandmother, is on a ship. She's leaving her family and Germany behind her and she's headed towards the United States. She's alone and she's scared and she's with other women who are in a similar situation. They didn't plan on leaving Germany, but they had no choice. In 1933, Hitler and the Nazi party took power. It began with boycotts of Jewish businesses. Then it was book burnings of books written by Jews. Eventually Jews were pushed out of their professions and schools. And eventually they weren't even considered citizens of their own country. Sigbert Appel, Edith's fiance, had left Germany in 1936 he was lucky, he had a sponsor in the United States, so he went on ahead to get a home and get a job. And Edith's chance to leave came in 1938. And as hard as it was to leave her brother, her parents, her family and friends and the life she knew behind her, she had to go. Well, it's 2015 and I'm in Israel with my father. We're going to Yad Vashem and we're walking into the museum. We see Jewish people from Eastern Europe living in shtetls, working, playing until the Holocaust. And then it gets really dark. We come upon the children's memorial and we see a candle that's refracted by glass to represent the 1.5 million children who were killed in the Holocaust. And I think to myself, I am so lucky to be standing here today with my father. If my grandparents didn't get out when they did, I wouldn't be alive today. And I think to myself, is there something I can do to further Holocaust education? 
Well, it's 2017 and I work for an insurance agency. Business is slow, so my boss has to cut my hours back. And I decide to reach out to a friend, Pepe Margolis. She's the program director for the Institute of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Raritan Valley Community College. I reach out to see if she could use some volunteer help. And it turns out her mother's health was failing and she could really use a hand. So we began scheduling time for me to come in and, and help her out. Typically we're in her office, it's a round table with stacks of papers and we're putting packets together for the teachers and students that are gonna be coming to the college. During one of these times when I'm volunteering, Pepe men mentions Gratz College and she mentions that they have this phenomenal um, Holocaust and Genocide Studies master's program. Being that Pepe is a child of Holocaust survivors and she has dedicated her entire career to Holocaust and Genocide Studies, I decide to look into it because I really value and trust her opinion. It's 2018 and I get an email from Mindy Blackman at Gratz College. I've been accepted in the program for Holocaust and Genocide Studies and I am so excited. Mindy Blackman is really my point person at Gratz College. Whenever I have a question about registering or if there's a course that I'm not sure about, I email Mindy and within moments, she's emailing me back, giving me the information I need to help me as I'm making the choices through the master's program. Mindy was such a huge help and it really reassured me through my program and studies at Gratz. It's 2019 and Pepe tells me that she's retiring and she encourages me to apply for the job program specialist at the Institute of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Raritan Valley Community College. I decide to apply and thankfully I get the job. I'm so excited. Not only am I working now at the college, I'm also finishing up my studies and writing my thesis at Gratz and I'm thrilled. It's November 3rd, 2020, and I'm going into work. I'm headed to the library because I've brought an exhibit from the Montreal Holocaust Museum, and it's now in our library, this traveling exhibit. It's called, and in 1948, I came to Canada, the Holocaust in six states. This exhibit is phenomenal because it really pinpoints six pivotal periods during the Holocaust to help people understand what happened. And I'm going up to the library just to make sure the room is organized and ready for our visitors coming in the afternoon. When I walk in, I see two students sitting at a table. So I introduce myself and I ask them if they've looked at the exhibit. As it turns out, they were talking about one of the photos in the exhibit, a young couple just married. It's 1942 and they're in Amsterdam. The photo's taken in front of the great synagogue it's actually the last wedding that takes place there in 1942. And I tell the students that sadly, tragically, this couple does not survive. They're sent to Sobibor concentration camp where they're murdered. And the students are taken aback. They're the same age as the people in the photo. So then we begin to talk about some of the other parts of the exhibit. And then I share my own story. I tell them how I am a grandchild of Holocaust survivors and how if my grandparents didn't get out of Germany when they did, I wouldn't be here today. I tell them specifically about my grandmother, Edith Israel, who came to the United States on a ship all alone, leaving her family behind and coming to a country where she didn't speak the language and had no idea what she would expect. The students really appreciated me sharing my story with them. The young man shook my hand and asked me, are there flyers about this exhibit around campus so other students can learn about this exhibit? And I showed them the stack of flyers I had. I just hadn't had time to put them up yet. The young man turned to his friend and said to them, would you mind helping her out and putting up the flyers? And, and they agreed. So. The students actually took the flyers and helped me out by putting them up on campus. I feel like I was handing over 
the stories and this period of history to the next generation. I just wanna take a moment to say thank you to Gratz College, Pepe Margolis, Mindy Blackman, my family, my husband, my children. I could not be here today without their love and support and encouragement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, thank you for all the wonderful work that you do. We really appreciate that. Our third storyteller is Jonathan Levin. Jonathan, a 1966 graduate of Gratz Hebrew High School, is, has earned a JD from Georgetown University and a BA cum laude from Temple University, my other alumna. Oh, wow. Jonathan serves as senior counsel in the firm's financial industry group. Jonathan is the author of numerous banking articles and is a regular speaker at banking and professional organization events. He also has been a visiting lecturer at the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome, Jonathan. Late summer, 1964. I'm 16 and waiting to begin my junior year of high school. Back in May, I was confirmed at Congregation Adith Jeshurun, where I finished my Hebrew school career, so I thought. That summer, I spent at Camp Ramah in the Poconos as my last summer as a camper. And now, being back home, my mother tells me that in our family, Jewish education never really ends. And she's so happy. Johnny, you're going to be going to Gratz College Hebrew High School. Before you start, I think it would be wonderful if we could drive down and meet some people. So on we went to 10th and Tabor and we were ushered in to the office of Dean Elazar Goldman. And with him was registrar Danny Isaacman. They greeted my mother warmly and we took the chairs in front of Doc, uh, Dean Goldman's desk. My mother turns to me and says, Johnny, Dean Goldman and Danny are good friends of our family. They know your grandparents, they're friends of your parents, and now I'm so pleased to introduce them to you. I smiled politely and said hello. And she said, you know, Johnny was at Camp Ramah this summer and they put on a production of Oklahoma in Hebrew. He knows all the songs in Oklahoma in Hebrew. Well, I saw their eyes widen with anticipation. And she said to me, Johnny, why don't you perform a song for them? Seeing no way out, I took a deep breath, stood up, and the carpet in front of Dean Goldman's desk became a stage. Oklahoma shamharu achafar basadot behashibalim hazehu vot al kanfe haru achenaot Oklahoma balelot im yalda tiyeshev Yakta Beshek at Nito Be Baraki on Esher Mistovev Yadanuli Benu Shayach Kanazod Hamo Led a Heach Ukshenik Rayo Ayipayo Amarnu Shetova Yakara Viafa at Oklahoma Aleph of Koflam at Hey Bav Mem Hey Oklahoma, 
With their applause, my career at Gratz began. It's the first day of class. I'm sitting in the second row. The course is Pirkei Avot. I don't really know what that means. Ethics of the Fathers, I, I don't know any better what that means. I'm waiting for the teacher, Rabbi Nathan Reisner, to appear. Oh, here he comes. Bald, short, bearded, bespectacled, puts his books down on the desk. Shalom, class. Welcome to Pirkei Avot. Many of you probably don't know exactly what Pirkei Avot is, the ethics of the fathers. But let me tell you, that it's part of the Talmud and it's chock full of words to live by. In the next several weeks, we will walk together through the text and you'll meet great sages like Hillel, Shammai, Rabbi Akiva, and so many more. And there's one thing that I want you to keep in mind above all else as we read the text. I want you to examine every verse and I want you to question every idea because only in that way will you be able to find the meaning of these verses in your life. Wait a minute. What did he say? Question everything? That doesn't sound like any Hebrew school I know, this could be fun. As the weeks went by, I loved what I was learning, so much so I would bring it home. Each day that I had grats, I would come to the dinner table with where my father and mother and 13-year-old brother and little sister sat, and I would recite for them what I had learned. Like, if you learn some, from someone a single chapter, a single rule, a single verse, a single expression, or even a single letter, you must honor that person as your teacher. My mother took a special interest in what I was learning. You see, at that time, she was president of the Philadelphia region of National Women's League. And she would crisscross the area speaking before all the conservative congregation sisterhoods. It became her routine to come to me. Johnny, you know Pirkei Avot. Find me a saying that would be a good keynote for my presentation. Sure, Mom. Here's one of my favorites. You're not obligated to complete the task, but neither are you free to abandon the work. I always found the perfect verse. Today, more than a half a century later, what I learned at Gratz continues to guide my life, and I will hold it in my heart forever. Jonathan, wow, wow, wow. That was wonderful. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Uh, we want to make sure we mention that Jonathan is a new member of the Gratz Board of Governors, and he promises to do the entire Oklahoma at the next meeting. So uh, you'll want to be part of that. Anyway, thank you, Jonathan, so much. Now it's time for the second question in the Gratz History Trivia Quiz. Are you ready? Who taught the first online Gratz class? Was it A, Jonathan Rosenbaum, B, Dr. Uzi Adini, who our Gratz community recently lost, C, Rella Geffen, who our community also lost in recent years, or D, Ruth Sandberg? 
Who taught the first online class at Gratz? Was it A, Jonathan Rosenbaum, B, Uziadini, C, Ruth Sandberg, or D, Rella Geffen? If you know the answer, now's the time. Your first and last name so we know who you are in the chat. Okay. Wonderful. So the winner will be announced at the end of the program. And remember, there is still time to purchase a $5 raffle ticket. So see the chat for a link. The chat, of course, is over there. Okay. Now, our fourth storyteller is Stephanie Blake. Stephanie is a double Gratz alumna. Just this year, in 2021, Stephanie earned a Doctor of Education in Education Leadership at Gratz College. She also earned her Master of Education at Gratz, as well as an MBA and a Master's Degree from Arcadia University. Stephanie currently serves as the Early Childhood Racial Equity Coordinator for Children First. She has worked in early childhood education for over 15 years and is a workforce fellow at Philadelphia's Office of Children and Families. She is an adjunct faculty at Harkham College, Rowan University, and Arcadia University. We now welcome Stephanie. I'm eight years old and I'm sitting with my mom and dad. And I say, I wanna be a doctor. I wanna help kids. I wanna make them feel better. And I look at my mom and she smiles. And my dad says, I'm so happy to hear that. But I'm now I'm in seventh grade. I walk into a science lab and the first thing I see on the table is a dead frog looking at me on a on a pit, uh, on a luminal uh, tin. And I'm like, "Ugh, this is disgusting." So I see my lab partner ready to go with her gloves on and the scalpel. And I looked at the dead frog and I looked at her and said, I'll just do the paperwork. Now I finished my first year of college working a summer job at the YMCA. And I'm working at a childcare program. I walk into the program, I hear uh, laughter I see smiling faces, happy kids, but I also hear crying and I am terrified. But each day I go into the program, I get hugs and smiles because the children are so happy to see me. And then I realize going back to college I need to change my major from computer science into becoming an educator. Now, I finished my master's at Arcadia University with my a business degree. And I got a job as an instructional specialist, supporting educators, mentoring them, coaching them. And I walk into a childcare program in a preschool classroom, observing a teacher and the, in the classroom. So I walk in, I hear the laughter, I see the smiles, I see happy children playing. But I hear the teacher say, it's time to go. Wash your hands, put on your coats. I think to myself, huh, no one's talking to the children. No one's asking them how they are doing. So later that afternoon, I had a conversation with the teachers 
And I say, you know what? Your classroom looks fantastic. It's organized. The children are happy. I see smiling faces. But we have to ask the children, how are they? So a few weeks later, I return back to the same classroom. I see the same happy children, smiling faces, well-organized classroom. But now I hear the teacher say, how are you, Jonathan? Uh, what did you eat last night for dinner, Samantha? Well, what did you build in the block center? And I thought, what an impact I made on those teachers and that classroom. Now, I'm sitting at my computer, just finished my master's in education at Gratz College, and I decided to go, go for my uh, doctorate degree. I'm sitting and I'm about to submit my dissertation, the first three chapters, and I am scared. But I'm writing about the barriers African-American women teachers face when moving into a leadership, early childhood leadership role. And I know this is an important topic, but am I the person to write about it? I hit send but I'm nervous. A few weeks go by and I had to speak with my advisor, Dr. Gallardi. I was scared when I had to call because I didn't know what she was gonna say. She answers the phone and I'm holding my breath and she says, you're a great writer. There's a few things you need to work on to expand on your dissertation. And you wanna make sure you're asking or fulfilling what your study wants. So then I took a deep breath. I said, I am exactly where I need to be. It's graduation day. I can't believe I did it. But since we're in COVID, fortunately it was had to be recorded. So I walk into Gratz Library and I see my cap and gown on the, the coat hanger and I grab it and put it on. I'm so excited. And I go line up, wait for my name to be called, Stephanie Blake. I walk over to the podium and I get hooded. I shake President Fink Finkelman's hand. He tells me, congratulations. I look at the camera and smile. I walk away. I can't believe that I just graduated with my doctorate of education. My vision for the future, I see myself teaching undergrad and graduate educators because I want them to be better educators because they have such an important job. But I also see myself teaching online at Gratz College, wink, wink. I see myself standing at a podium chanting, what do we want equity? When do we want it now? because I want to help more black and brown children get opportunities that were not always afforded to them. And I also see myself growing my business, early uh, Learn and Power Grow, an educational consulting company, and standing in front of educators, telling them that you have a very important, important job because you are creating and supporting our youngest learners. I want you to learn, empower, and grow. Wow, thank you, Stephanie, for sharing your story. We all know that in the future, we're gonna hear the name Stephanie Blake in 
in lights. Wonderful, beautifully done. Uh, now it's time for the third question in the Gratz History Trivia Quiz. Are you ready? Here we go. Which of the following spoke at Gratz College? Was it A, Joseph Biden, B, David Ben-Gurion, C, Hyman Gratz, D, Biden and Ben-Gurion, or E, all of the above? Type your answer in the chat box. Make sure that you have both your first and last name there. So which of the following people spoke at Gratz College? Was it A, Joseph Biden, B, David Ben-Gurion, C, Hyman Gratz, or D, Biden and Ben-Gurion, or E, all of the above? So if you know the answer, please put it in the chat so we can let you have the winning, the wins, all these wonderful gifts. So we uh, thank all those who have participated up to this point. And uh, the winner, of course, will be announced at the end of the program. And now we arrive at the present with our fifth and final storyteller, Jacob Stockman. Jacob is a current student at Gratz's nonprofit management program and has a master's degree in community development at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He is a high tech executive turned social entrepreneur who is the founding director of the Gabriel Project Mumbai. He and his wife, Ilana Merilis Stockman, live in Modi'in, Israel, with their four children and the Maccabees. They're from Modi'in, too. I'm sure they're his neighbors. Anyway, Baruch Haba, Jacob, welcome. Growing up in Australia, I never thought that I'll be studying at Gratz with a master's program. And then again, I never thought that I would find myself in India either. But it's, two, it's 2011, and I'm in a Mumbai office of the high-tech company that I was working in. And I'm walking in the slums, which are everywhere in Mumbai. And this is what I see. Kids with distended stomachs searching through garbage for apple cores and banana peels to eat. Ten men lowering a five-year-old boy, a rope tied around his skinny waist, lowering him down into a sewer drain. You see, the sewer was blocked and his body acts as a sewer drain cleaner. And with the sewer now unblocked, they lift him out, his body covered in black tar. I'm back home in Israel, and I'm, I'm not sleeping. All night, I'm up in front of the computer. I'm researching, crunching numbers, playing with budgets. How can I help the children? My wife wakes up. What are you doing? It's 3 a.m. in the morning. And it all pours out of me. Kids, slums, child labor, garbage, black tar. I need to do something. My wife looks at me, holds my hand, and says, Honey, you got to follow your heart. So it's six months later, and we've started. Food is being cooked, 500 children in school, no student doing child labor. Kids are healthy, and they're happy. But oh my God, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I have a nonprofit, but I don't know anything. I don't know anything about international development. I don't know anything about running an NGO, a non-government organization, and I definitely don't have anything, I don't know anything about how to run a 501c3 US nonprofit. And I left my job and I left my career for this. And I need help. Help to understand how to run a nonprofit. 
I'm online and I start Googling, searching for help. And I find a program, an online course, Jewish, made for people who work like me, and a great school. Grats. Fast forward. I'm in class, nonprofit law, in an online discussion, and we're talking about yearly finding filings in uh, with the IRS. And I've got this. I know this. I've been filing with the IRS for three years already, and I am smug. The professor talks about state filings. And I go, what? What are state filings? Hey, buddy, says a colleague from Brooklyn. You got to file in Jersey. Oh, my God. I never filed in the state that I'm registered in, New Jersey. Dr. Welsh to the rescue. He teaches the class about state filings. He sends me a link. And now I file every year in New Jersey. I'm running around one of our villages in India. And people are looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm climbing on rocks, standing on a cow shed, one hand high holding a phone and the other hand cradling my open laptop. What is this crazy foreigner doing? And then I see it, the water tower, the tallest structure in the village. And this is it. I climb the metal ladder, my hand held high with the phone, the other hand hugging the ladder and the laptop, and I'm looking for bars, bars on the phone for data reception, because I had to send my grats assignment today. And so I start climbing. One bar, a little higher, two bars. I'm halfway up. I see three bars. That's just enough. I bend down. I press submit. And my assignment flies off from a little remote village in India to Philadelphia. A few weeks ago, Debbie Aaron, my nonprofit management advisor, tells me, thesis time. I only have a few courses left till I graduate. And I have to write what they call a capstone thesis. What do you want to write about? I say the ethics of volunteering in vulnerable communities around the world. Well, she suggests, how about asking Dr. Alan Glazerman? I Google him, of course, and Dr. Glazerman has written many journal articles on the ethics of medical volunteering in underserved communities around the world. Actually, he's pretty much a rock star professor on the subject. So I was very nervous and intimidated. My hands just a little trembling. I get on the phone. Um, he gets on. So you're Australian. I lived in Australia a few years back. I'm put straight away at ease. And we get right down to work on my thesis. Welcome to India and welcome to the Gabriel Project Mumbai. Come and see our school. See 1,000 students in our classrooms, children with upward faces learning, eating nutritious meals, laughing and playing. Now come in and see our health clinic. See the women and children being treated by our local doctors and nurses. 
350 patients a week. And here is one of our women's collectives sewing thousands of face masks to be distributed during Corona in dozens of villages. Come see our vibrant communities. And thank you, Gratz, for introducing me to amazing colleagues and providing me with expert professors and for making me a better nonprofit manager. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and all your work. And thank you for staying up so late. We know it's like midnight already in uh, Modi'in. Uh, thank you to all of our speakers today. All of our storytellers were so inspiring. I hope you felt the same way I did about all their stories. So beautiful, so beautifully done. Thanks to all who participated in the raffle as well. It is officially now closed. And now it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce Rabbi Dr. Zev Elif, the president of Gratz College. He is the author and editor of nine books and more than 50 scholarly articles and comes to us most recently from Chicago where he served as chief academic officer of Hebrew Theological College and vice provost of Toro College, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Rabbi Dr. Zev Elif, President of Gratz College. Thank you, Kenny. And thank you to our eloquent Gratz alumni. My Gratz story dates back to 1819. In that year, Rebecca Gratz founded the Female Hebrew Benevolent Society of Philadelphia to be useful to her indigent sisters of the House of Israel. In my studies and in my writing, I have spent time with American Jewry's leading woman, listening to her assessments of a religious functionary who she felt was a good man, but not a particularly learned man. In fairness to Rebecca Gratz, she was no pessimist. On another occasion, she sized up another rabbinical personality, recounting to her niece how this particular preacher marshaled evidence from uncommon rabbinic and secular texts as well as the Old and New Testaments. Never married, Rebecca treated her nieces like her daughters, her students like her grandchildren. Her nieces later recalled that special relationship as well as the much-worn Bible that was perpetually perched atop their aunt's table. That Bible, that Torah, was her favorite text, her impetus to help lead Philadelphia's non-sectarian orphan society, and then found the very first Jewish Sunday school in the United States. Maybe it's a professional hazard of a historian, but I believe that Rebecca Gratz set this program into motion. She convinced her siblings that education was a key to cultural continuity. One brother, Hyman, ensured that a portion of the family's significant fortune was made into a college, Gratz College. The Gratz stories we've listened to this afternoon speak to a shared legacy that emanates from Gratz College's founders. They betoken the theme of this event, a shared history. Within each story reverberates an idea about the application of wisdom, how relationships with thoughtful people and connections with deep learning has made a difference in one another's lives. Applied Jewish wisdom, we believe, is not just about Jewish faith or just for the Jewish people. Our curriculum and the impact of our programs makes that altogether clear. Applied Jewish wisdom begs us as caretakers to furnish and cultivate our Torah and share it with others under the good faith that what we share makes meaning in our lives and in the lives of others. This takes place in synagogues, in public school classrooms, in sleepaway camps, and Holocaust museums. What links these Torah together is a shared belief in the power of education. A faith anchored in the life of Rebecca Gratz, someone who wore down her Bible, her Torah, from decades of flipping through its pages and to apply its lessons in strategic context to the world around her. That's my Gratz story. 
and it seems to me it might fit within many of yours too. It's what for so many decades undergirded the high school programs and what animates our flagship offerings in Jewish studies and in education. It's what has raised Gratz's Holocaust and Genocide program to the most robust and largest Holocaust graduate level program in the world over. My final task is to toast our community, to mark the occasion with a l'chaim, to life, to a life of meaning making and to a community founded in the spirit of shared history and shared memories. <laughs> to Rebecca Gratz and her evergreen legacy, to her ever-growing Gratz College community, L'chaim. Gratz to Gratz, L'chaim. L'chaim, L'chaim to Gratz. <laughs> L'chaim, everyone. L'chaim again to you all. Hello, everyone. My name is Naomi Hausman from Gratz College. Uh, and thank you, President Ella, for that wonderful toast to Gratz's future. Uh, thank you also to Kenny Ellis for being such an extraordinary and entertaining host. We are so proud of Kenny, not only because he's an alum, but also because he's a very talented artist. Um, in case you are wondering, if you want to see more of him, he can be caught on Apple TV Plus in his role as a uh, as the cantor uh, in, um, I'm sorry, yes, a cantor in The Shrink Next Door with Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell. Very cool. If you haven't already picked up a copy of his Hanukkah Swing CD, please do so. It's not too late. It's a great gift for Hanukkah. I'd also like to give a big shout out to Jennifer Rudick Zunikoff, who you haven't seen tonight, but she's been working very closely with our storytellers for two months now, at least two months, and just has poured her heart into helping them learn the art of storytelling and has coached them uh, so beautifully. And as you can see from what you heard tonight and what you heard is just uh, an incredible, uh, just an incredible masterpiece that they were able to share their story so beautifully and so powerfully. So thank you, Jennifer. Um, I'd also like to, before we wrap tonight, uh, give sincere thanks to my team, uh, the Institutional Advancement Team at Gratz, Dodie Klimoff, Lori Cohen, Mindy Cohen. Uh, they are just an incredible team and so talented and dedicated. Without them, this event would not be possible. So, so thank you very much. Uh, a very special thanks to Dodie, who uh, took leadership with the Alumni Oral History Project. And uh, she pulled together alums such as Jerry Silverman and the staff member Hope Matlis uh, and others who volunteered countless hours to help with this big project. Um, so now the wait is over. Uh, we have winners to announce for the raffle and the quiz. So let me start with the quiz first. So quiz question one, is, the answer was Rebecca Gratz, of course. The woman in the painting, the beautiful Rebecca Gratz, the sister of Jaime Gratz, our founder. And the winner of that, uh, that quiz question was the wonderful Sandra Lilienthal, who was once a member of our board of governors. So Sandra, thank you for jumping in there and uh, congratulations to you. Um, the answer to quiz question number two is Dr. Ruth Sandberg. She taught our very first online course. 
And uh, the winner for that was Zipporah Siegel. So Zipporah, congratulations. And I'm sure you're very proud of your daughter, Tali Siegel, who gave such a beautiful presentation tonight. Uh, and finally, quiz question number three. Uh, this was a tough one. The answer was both Joe Biden and David Ben-Gurion. Both were once speakers at Gratz, not together, but in separate occasions. Um, and the winner of that question is uh, Beth Raisin. So Beth, congratulations to you. Thank you all for participating. Last but not least, we have a raffle prize winner, Kathy and Jeff Kodroff. Thank you so much. Uh, they are parents of uh, Jewish Community High School uh, alum, and uh, we are so happy that you joined us tonight, all of you. So thank you. Congratulations. We'll be in touch with all of you to figure out a way to get these prizes to you. Um, I have another exciting announcement. We have a spring gala coming up in 2022. So mark your calendar for May 26th, 2022. We will be honoring uh, three wonderful people. Um, we have uh, two Gratz medals to give, Rabbi Lance Sussman to recognize his service at, to Gratz as our former board chair, and to Violet, Violet Zeitlin for her service to the Gratz Holocaust Oral History Archive. Uh, we love you both and we cannot wait to honor you. Uh, we will also be conferring an honorary doctorate in May uh, upon Erwin Kotler. You may know him. He's a, a, a very important person uh, in the world and in Canada. Um, he's the international chairman of the Raoul Wallenberg Center for Human Rights. And our first, Gratz's first, Isaacman Distinguished Visiting Professor in Holocaust and Genocide Studies. He'll be giving a public talk sometime in this school year, and so we'll stay tuned for that date. Uh, so again, mark your, mark your calendars for May 26th. Uh, and of course, before we wrap, I want to give a huge thanks out to all of our generous event sponsors and all of those who you attended today. And of course, to our presenters, all of you, all of our storytellers for your wonderful uh, stories and giving back to Gratz in this incredible way. Um, so if you haven't already made your gift, your year-end gift to Gratz, it's not too late. You have until December 31st. We're going to be um, uh, looking forward to hearing from you, and uh, your gift is important to Gratz. Uh, we need your support, and uh, it means a lot to us um, as in terms of strengthening us and moving us forward in as an institution. Um, so finally, I want to invite all of the alumni who are joining us tonight if, they, if you would like, um, if you want to finish your glass of champagne with some fellow alum, we invite you to join the celebration on a separate platform on Zoom right after the program ends. Uh, you can hang out in the high school Zoom breakout room or you can hang out in the college alumni room. We will have, ho I'll be hosting the college room and we have other staff who will be hosting the high school room. We have uh, special guest visitors from staff and faculty will be there to join you. So we hope you continue to enjoy uh, some time. Uh, you're invited to join. Uh, the link should be in the chat. So as soon as we wrap this program, you can click on those links and join the uh, alumni Zoom schmooze rooms, as we're calling them. Um, so thank you again. Um, I wanted to uh, just uh, also thank all of the alumni. We had hundreds and hundreds, almost a thousand alum who responded to our uh, alumni project this year. And so um, we're looking forward to the publication. It will be released in March. This is the alumni oral history book and it's gonna be beautiful. So thank you to the over 500 people who shared a story um, for that book, which will be published in the spring. And it's your, it's your participation in that book that really inspired tonight's program and really uh, gave us this idea. Uh, while we're waiting for that book to be published, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we shared some of those stories um, because they're so wonderful. Uh, so on your screen, you will see a QR code. If you hold your phone up to that code um, and your camera can turn on your camera, you can capture the QR code and that will allow you to make a donation. If that's the way you'd like to donate, we wanted to give you that option. Um, just hold your camera right up there. And as soon as your camera registers it, you tap the screen, it will take you right to our online donation form. Of course, you can always send us a check. You can always go to our online donation form on grass.edu. And uh, you can always reach out to me and houseman at grass.edu. I would love to hear from you. And um, we appreciate all of you in, in whatever way you want to give that's meaningful to you. So I'm going to wrap the program from all of us at Gratz College. I wish you and all of your loved ones and family a happy, healthy, safe, and joyful holiday season. Thank you so much and good night and goodbye for now.